What's up guys, here Mox Gaming, your F2P OPA's person. The global version of Tokyo Ghoul Break the Chains has officially launched. If you are looking for the best tier list and reroll guide, especially for beginners, this video will help you choose the right one. Recommend watching repeatedly. You find this video is helpful? Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe channel. This tier list provides user-friendly, comprehensive character evaluations for both early and late game phases. Now I shall provide in-depth review and those into SSR characters. Let's diving into the mysterious realm, of B tier firstly. Itori, a supporter with skills that provide group damage amplification and dispel debuffs. However, it's important to note that the damage amplification effect only triggers if she hasn't taken damage herself. Her impact is not significant in both PvP and PV. Nico sacrificing her own health to remove all debuffs from our team and providing a two-turn immunity effect, increasing damage dealt and reducing damage received. In the early stages, this character might not be very practical for beginners, as she is vulnerable to enemy attacks and can be easily taken down. Take Hiroko with an AoE active skill that has a lifesteal effect. When dealing damage to enemies with health below 50 damage inflicted in the next two turns increases based on their own health. It's essential to team up with characters that have healing abilities and tanky characters to maximize its potential. Moreover, while in a bloodthirsty state, it deals damage to the enemy with the lowest health. Next, let's talk about a tire Kurowa. With taunt effect skills, when attacked by the enemy, he reflects damage back to the enemy. Additionally, he provides the enemy team with a debuff that reduces critical hit rate and critical hit damage. Hit damage. Tankamaru. If you don't have a particularly suitable single target damage dealer, at the beginning, Takamaki Nozumu can serve as a substitute character in the early stages of the game, especially in PV boss battles. The more buffs, the greater the damage, and he also increases his own critical hit rate. At the start of our turn, if there are three or more charged effects, he will immediately deal damage to the enemy with the lowest health. Roko Fugichi, a tank character, can reduce damage received by our team for two turns and take on a portion of the damage received by other allies. If this skill is triggered, she randomly deals 280 damage to the enemy, incorporating a counterattack mechanism. Moreover, when she takes damage, she has a self-healing ability. This character is more suitable for PV boss battles. Boss battles. Boss battles. Boss battles. Boss battles. Cordy UI, when their own health falls below 50, randomly deals damage to an enemy and gains a shield equal to the damage dealt. Damage dealt. Neuro, with an AoE active skill that includes a damage boost effect triggered when taking damage. The condition is receiving a single hit, exceeding 40 of their own health, when their HP is below 30. This enhances their basic stats by 15 for one turn, and, after using the skill twice, increases attack-related abilities by 3T. Motto featuring an AoE skill, with additional attack damage to enemies. If there's at least one power attribute character on the field, Akira's own attack power increases. When attacked by enemies with debuffs, she triggers a counterattack damage skill. Tsukiyama taunts enemies when dealing damage, reducing received damage for two turns. Whenever our team uses a posture skill, grants a shield to the entire team, equal to 200 of the attacker's attack. This condition requires having a team member with a posture skill. Additionally, when dealing damage to enemies, can dispel their buffs, while having a shield effect, increases attack-related abilities and gains a counterattack effect. Yoshimura is quite versatile. When he uses her active skill to damage the enemy, all our team members deal additional damage when they attack. Additionally, when he takes damage, he increases his health for three turns and removes all debuffs. He also counterattacks against the attacker. Nashiro Yasuhisa, perfect for both PvP and PV boss battles. When dealing damage to an enemy, the more self buffs, the higher the additional damage inflicted. Additionally, the target experiences increased damage taken, decreased damage dealt, or reduced critical resistance for one turn, with one of these effects being randomly applied. Kurona Yasuhisa, just like Nashiro Yasuhisa, is perfect for both PvP and pod boss battles. She increases her damage based on the number of debuffs on the enemy, up to a maximum of 20. At the start of our turn, she grants the entire team an increase in basic stats. Additionally, when she deals damage, her critical hit rate also increases. Naki, a character with powerful single target damage, also lowers the enemy's skill level with each attack. This character is particularly well suited for PvP. When Naki is on the field, every time our team uses an energy card, our characters can recover a portion of lost health. Pairing Naki with Hachikawa can quickly increase the frequency of energy card use. Additionally, when our characters attack enemies they have a type advantage against, the critical rate increases by 30, which is quite formidable, and then so tire. Kairoshima inflicts AoE damage and ignores enemy defense. Additionally, at the beginning of each of our turns, he deals 100 of his attack as damage to all enemies. If he didn't take damage in the previous turn, his critical rate increases by 15 and he applies a debuff to the enemies, preventing all recovery effects. Re-effects. Nishio inflicts damage on enemies with a lifesteal effect. At the beginning of our first turn, deals damage to the enemy with the lowest health and reduces their defense. 
when dealing damage to targets with debuffs increases own lifesteal rate by an additional 40. In specific battles, our team's life-related abilities are increased. Yomo provides single target damage with a beneficial effect. Randomly applies one of the following debuffs to the enemy for one turn. Damage reduction, increased damage taken, or reduced critical resistance. When our team uses an energy card, the entire team gains an increase in attack-related abilities. Kirio Mato comes with an AoE skill for damage. This character has a passive skill that specifically increases damage against stability zone characters. For every three active skills used by our team, our characters receive an increase in attack-related abilities. When used in conjunction with team members who have posture skills, we can remove debuffs from our team. Additionally, releasing skills provides extra energy points. Omurai, perfect for both PvP and PIV gameplay. When dealing damage to enemies, he inflicts a debuff preventing them from taking any action. Additionally, after dealing damage, his own skill levels increase. Whenever an enemy character enters a disabled state, our team gains increased damage dealt and reduced damage received for two turns. Hachikawa, with an AoE active skill that not only deals damage but also applies a damage-boosting debuff to the enemy team. For every two debuffs on the enemy, our team's damage increases and damage received decreases. Additionally, when the enemy's debuffs expire, Hachikawa delivers a follow-up attack. The drawback is that she needs teammates who can apply debuffs, and the damage-boosting and damage-reducing passive skills only activate when there are two debuffs on the enemy. Utah, with an active skill that boosts the skill levels of all allied characters and increases basic stats. Additionally, if, at the start of our turn, no damage was taken in the previous round, our character's attack-related abilities will increase. This character's skill is particularly effective in PV boss battles. Fuiguchi, a relatively effective healer, suitable for both PvP and PV boss battles. She comes with a group healing skill that activates at the end of our turns, restoring health to our team. Additionally, she has the ability to randomly remove a debuff from one of our allies. Furthermore, every time she deals damage to an enemy target, it also triggers a partial health recovery for our entire team. Shinohara is an interesting character. When she damages the enemy, the target deals 15 less damage for two turns. Upon using her skill for the first time, she grants our entire team increased damage and decreased damage taken. She also provides a shield to our team based on their maximum health. Additionally, when our team gains a buff, the target receives an increase in their basic stats. Finally, let's talk about SS tier. Tokaki Rishima, with an AoE active skill that not only deals damage but also applies a damage-boosting debuff to the enemy team. For every two debuffs on the enemy, our team's damage increases and damage received decreases. Additionally, when the enemy's debuffs expire, Hachikawa delivers a follow-up attack. The drawback is that she needs teammates who can apply debuffs, and the damage-boosting and damage-reducing passive skills only activate when there are two debuffs on the enemy. Juzo Suzuya comes with an AoE skill that inflicts damage on enemies and applies a death mark. When a target with a death mark dies, gains one basic ability and immediately deals damage to all enemies. At the start of our turn, gains an empowering mark for oneself, and upon reaching four marks, grants a 10 increase in all abilities for two turns. After the death mark effect triggers, all basic abilities for our team are increased. Kamashiro possessing both powerful critical damage output and support buffs. His active skill increases his critical rate by wine for each wee decrease in the enemy's remaining HP. Once the critical rate is triggered, he gains an additional 30 critical damage. Therefore, in RC Cell, try to stack up the critical rate buff and grant the basic ability increase effect for the next two turns, allowing him to evade two enemy attack skills. His passive skill increases the healing rate for the entire team at the end of our turn. If he uses a skill, it boosts the entire team's attack and reduces the entire enemy team's defense. Kaneki, his passive skill is quite remarkable. If his HP is above 70 x tree, each re add a 0.5 to his damage, reaching a maximum of 50 at 100 HP. Additionally, Kaneki boosts the crit damage of all allied speed characters by 15. When teamed up with a healer like Hainami, he gains a 4 ATP boost each time he recovers HP, stacking up to 5 times. Keep in mind that these skills activate when Kaneki reaches limit levels 3 and 6, so early game players need to invest time in developing him. Arima, his active skill is quite powerful dealing higher damage to enemy targets as the star level of the synthesized skill cards increases. However, it requires some time to stack the skill cards, and in a fast-paced battle, waiting for Arima's highest attack skill to appear might not be feasible. Additionally, Arima's passive skill is quite interesting. When other allies use single target skills, Arima's cooperative attack skill is triggered, launching a secondary attack after the ally's skill and ignoring defense, dealing 80 Tte damage. Oh my, this skill is fantastic. I need to get Arima. When Arima's limit reaches level 3, every two times you trigger the bonus attack, it can increase AK-related stats by three turns, stacking up to six times. For all players, when Arima's limit reaches level 3, his combat power becomes extremely terrifying. And then let's talk about reroll guide. You could reroll again if you haven't get the character you want to follow my perform. 
Launch Tokyo Gruel break the chains on your device and log in using your Google account or other social account. Unfortunately, there is no guest login option. After that, complete the tutorial part. It only takes about 12 minutes to unlock the summoning system when you complete Main Story Stage 1-6. You'll receive 10 gacha tickets for free, guaranteeing you an SSR character. Unfortunately, there's no reroll button, so you have to accept the results of this summon. In addition, you'll also get 800 diamonds, which you can use to do 80 summons in the limited time banner. You'll also receive 32 gacha tickets for the regular banner. So, if your luck isn't too bad, there's a high chance you can pull characters like Kaneki or Arima from the limited time banner. This is an excellent benefit for beginners and F2 players. So, if you get the SR characters you want, you can fully enjoy the satisfaction on your team. But hey, if you're not satisfied with your gacha results, don't worry, you can click on the settings button in the top left corner of the game screen, then find the account section. Click on user control and you'll see options to either delete your account or log out. After that, you can re-roll with a new social account for registration. For beginner and F2 players, I would recommend focusing all your gacha pulls on the limited time banner, especially because Kaneki and Arima are exclusive characters not available in the regular banner. Secondly, these two characters are incredibly powerful. If you skip this banner, the next event banner might not appear for at least 2-3 months. So FTW players, during the event, complete some tasks, save up diamonds, and try your best to pull at least one of these two characters. It's very easy for early game progression. It is beginner friendly and suitable for F2PI players. The limited time banner has a pity system where you get an additional random SRSR character at the 100th and 200th summon. Upon reaching a total of 300 summons, you can choose either Kaneki or Arima as a guaranteed SSR. When it comes to gacha rates, first banners are divided into three types, limited time banner featuring Kaneki and Arima, regular banner, and attribute specific banners for strength, speed, and skill. Beginners can receive a random SF rare character on logging in for seven days. For the limited time banner, you have a 3 chance for SSR characters, a 37 chance for SAR characters, and a 60 chance for R characters. The chance to pull Kaneki and Arima individually within the 3 SS issue rate is 0. 25 Lash and Perpture. Well, the above Tokyo Ghoul Break the Chain's Best Tire List and Reroll Guide. I've provided timestamps in the description. If you find the video is helpful, don't forget to subscribe channel. See you next video.